story. That's I don't tell jokes. I don't know how to tell jokes. It's my first time doing this. Woo! 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 More of that. Yeah. Woo! Okay. So, um, to set up the story, uh, I go on vacations with other families. I know that sounds <laughs> weird, but it's, it's pretty much just because my mom isn't going to take me anywhere. She doesn't have money to take me anywhere, and I'm cool with that, so I get pawned off with other families and have to <laughs> mediate their drama. So that's the deal. And it's a road trip. I'm on a road trip with my friend's family. We'll call them the Smash Bees. And it's, uh, that's not the real, I'm not going to name drop them. It's, they're, it's, so who, who, the only important people that you need to know are my best friends. And they're Tweedledum and Tweedledee. They're twins. Uh, the girl is Tweedledee. She's an angel. The boy is Tweedledum. He's Tweedledum. Okay? Um, and, and so... so we, we're on. We're, we're taking this road trip to national parks around the country. It's awesome. It's beautiful. We go to like Joshua Tree. We go to like Yellowstone. All this stuff. And then uh, the last leg of our journey is in Colorado, and it's at the Red Rocks. And the Red Rocks is this uh, like this uh, amphitheater that is naturally formed in the middle of the desert with these rocks that come up the side. And it's like a dome. And it creates like this really powerful sound in the middle of nowhere, naturally formed. And it's got this, it's like this deep pit, and it's got like steps, you know, yada, 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 stuff like that. And so that's where the audience stands, the band plays down there. And you only see people like the Grateful Dead there. Has anybody ever heard of the Grateful Dead? Okay. Uh, for you who haven't heard of it, it sounds like a heavy metal group. But it's the exact opposite. They actually started the acid movement in the 60s. So you know how you hear about the 60s? Yeah, they did that. Um, <laughs> so uh, what, what, what it was is uh, we... I'm drunk, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so we, uh, we... 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 Let's see, I did that. No, I don't know why I'm not. Okay, uh, so we're, we're at this concert, and the things that you have to know about a Grateful Dead concert, the first thing, I've never been to a Grateful Dead concert, I've been to, to like, uh, like uh, cover bands, and there are three types of people at a Grateful Dead concert, okay? And at the cover bands, too, this is, it's a crazy thing. There are people who are, like, a lot older, right? And they're, they're kind of, like, from the 60s, and they kind of missed out on the whole deal, and they're trying to really really get back to it, you know, see what they missed out on, and they're mad that they went, okay? They, they're not <laughs> happy about the long run. It's not worth their time, uh, the time they have left. Anyway. <laughs> and, and the second group of people that you see there, this too, is um, people like my age who just want to do drugs, and uh, I'm, not, I'm not putting myself in that group, but I'm drunk right now. And so they, they, uh, they go... They go there just because it's a free spirit drone kind of vibe, you know, everybody loves each other. It's, it's the 60s, pretty much. The third group of people who go, I've been going backwards. The third group of people who go are called deadheads, right? And they are people who follow the Grateful Dead around the country. And that is what they do. That's what they do. They, they, don't go to, they didn't go to school. They uh, went to a van and followed a bus of other hippies around to become hippies and do acid, okay? That, that's, uh, and by the way, this story has a lesson. It's, I'm not going to tell you exactly what it is, but it's about judging people and being right, okay? <laughs> <laughs> and so, um, so they, they, uh, they follow the Grateful Dead around, and they're, they're what you think the 60s would have turned into if it went through the 90s, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and so they've got dreads, made out of their dreads, and they've got pants that are way too baggy for MC Hammer, but they're made out of quilts. <laughs> uh, that's, that's what it is. And so, so we're at this concert, we're enjoying it, we're loving it, we're, cause, because cause we had an edible. And it's cool because the lights are awesome, and they're, they're, we're, you know, we're in the middle of the desert, everybody's loving each other. When you walk into the concert, they, uh, the way these people make this, their money is they have vendors set up, and it's basically vendors for uh, lunch, lunch, bag lunch sandwiches. Did anybody have a bag lunch when they go to school? Okay, it doesn't Ooh. matter, I don't know why I asked that. <laughs> <laughs> we don't care. <laughs> so we, uh, so they, that's what they sell, and, and, and you'll be, you know, you're squeezing your way through two people, and they're like, hey, no cutting. And you're like, cutting, what do you mean? And they're at the front of the concert, they're like, we're waiting in line for a frickin' sandwich, man. <laughs> and that's, that, it's that extensive. These people make bank and spend that bank on drugs. That's what happens. And so uh, we're, we're at the concert, we're enjoying it. And the next thing you know is, uh, we don't notice this, 
but it happened. Uh, people start to kind of clear out, you know? It's kind of like at prom, when like people kind of naturally like back up and make a circle around the guy who's like really freaking breaking it down. <laughs> Don't expect too much. They're really breaking it down, you know what I'm saying? And so, um, and so that's kind of what's happening here at this concert, but it's not because the guy's breaking it down. Uh, it's because the guy is, is dancing spastically. I don't know. <laughs> He's having this pretty much a seizure to this music, but it is maybe to the music. I'm gonna. I need some more room. So this is kind of how he was dancing. <laughs> uh, and and I'll describe him later. He was, he was kind of doing these. <laughs> so that's why the ring uh, formed around him is because you didn't want to get hit by this guy's uh, rubby paws. <laughs> and so I say that because this guy was, uh, he smelled like weed. You could see his pupils from about a mile away. <laughs> and that means that he's on drugs. And um, he also, I'm oh, sorry. Um, and then he, um, <laughs> Put my mouth on the mic. Ah, oh, shit. It's okay. So, I gotta, I gotta really hurry up. Okay, so, he's dancing. He's got a long beard, right? He's got, like, as much hair as he has on his head that is not there. He doesn't have teeth in his mouth, okay? I'm not going to right order. He's holding two things in his hands. The manila folder and the balloon, okay? The balloon is also freaking up. Anyways, so, uh, so he stands as passively. I'm over here. Before we realize what's going on, we, we kind of dip ourselves into the crowd of people because he's making eye contact with people and be like, hey, I love you, man. And that's not cool. We didn't want to be a part of that. So he... So he... Um, ah, we, we don't have time for that! We walk, we walk over into the... We're trying to you know, dip ourselves out into the crowd. And before we could get too far, the one side of his boulder... Lips open, you know what I'm saying. And the, the piece of paper that was in the folder flies out and it lands directly at my feet. And I kind of look down and I think about it and I pick it up because I'm a nice guy. And uh, not a dick. I'm not a dick. And so I give it back to him and I read the paper and what it said, because it landed face up on my feet, it said, One month sober, congratulations. Oh. Stamped, signed, and approved. And uh, so I give it back to him. And so and so he he takes it back and all the ah! And so he, he takes it back and um and so uh, he he um he's like, did you read the paper? Did you read it? I'm like, no, oh, man, dude, I read the paper. You know what I mean? And so uh, he's like, I'm one month sober. I'm like, no, you're not. <laughs> and then finally, uh, so he tells us that he's in love with the balloon. Short, long story short. This is, he tells us that he's in love with the balloon, and the balloon loves him. And he says that I want to be sober for this balloon because I love the balloon. It's getting closer. Because I love the balloon. <laughs> and, uh, he says that anything that you love, you should let it go. And if it comes back to you, it loves you back. And I said, yeah, that's true. He's like, so I want you to have this acid if I free my balloon and the balloon comes back. And I'm like, okay, sure. And my friend's like, my friend's like, yeah, sure, we'll take the acid. <laughs> so he, 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 and so he, <laughs> he takes the acid. No, no. So the balloon, the balloon flies up, right? It's doing one of these, doing one of those, doing one of these, and then it pops, right? And it falls kind of behind us, right? Pretty far behind us. And eventually, you know, people are dancing and they kick it. Eventually, the guy's really heartbroken because the balloon didn't come back. That's the part that I forgot. To so, so he's he's broken at this point. His heart is broken. The love did not come back, and he's kicking it right. People are kicking. You know, they're dancing, and I see someone put him on. It gets kicked, and eventually it lands. I swear, this is a true story. It lands directly in between the guy's feet. The, the ruined remains of this guy's Aww. balloon. And at that point, we all sober up. We're like, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> and he picks up the balloon, he's like, oh, shit. And then finally, he gives us the acid, and my friend takes it as PCP. Thank you. <laughs>